Hello, welcome to my channel. My, my name is Dyer's Boy, and let's get started. So today, we will be talking about the Iguanodon. Now, the Iguanodon's name means iguana tooth, because at the time of its discovery, it was, or its teeth inside the skull were iguana-like, just like the actual iguana itself. Now, Iguanodon lived during the Cretaceous period, 126 to 122 million years ago. They were biped and quadruped. Now, Iguanodon had a special adaptation, and those were its thumbs. Now, the dinosaur Iguanodon, their arms were also special because dinosaurs like, like a carnivore, people most interpret their wrist going like this. That's not true. A dinosaur, for example, Allosaurus, will draw its humerus, radius, and ulna. A radius is attached to this ball right here, and it won't be able to turn like our bones are made to do. And also, dinosaurs don't have wrist bones, so it wouldn't be able to turn its hand. So literally, so here's the ulna and here's the radius, the hand bones would be like this. It would completely be disproportionate in the skin. They're built like this. They're built to be on the side, like that, if you can see it. Just like that. So that is a normal dinosaur, but this dinosaur guanodon is special. And I've said that many times, but I'm sure it's what I'm saying. Their bones, they're designed to do what I just demonstrated. Not to do that, but to do this. And their thumb claw was the most respected part of the dinosaur of all. Because its thumb was maybe about this big in real life. And it had, you know, like sharp serrations. So scientists wondered what the claw was actually used for. It is small compared to the dinosaur's body, so it really didn't make sense of what it could do. Some scientists argued that it was used for battle. Some scientists argued it was meant to cut trees down because it could stand on its hind legs and get higher branches. So the debate is still open, but it would make sense for both. Now, at the time of Iguanodon's discovery, in the 1820s, they thought that the horn was right here. But then, they recently discovered that it actually belonged to where the thumb bone was. Now, Iguanodon is a ornithesthesian. It belongs into a clade of hadrosaurs and I think lambiosaurids. If I'm, I'll correct myself eventually. So, they are found in most of Europe, but some fossils are shown to be in parts of North America. But the most common places were Germany, Belgium, Spain, most of Europe. So it was interpreted to be a British dinosaur. And it was actually one of the most discovered dinosaurs. Because at the time, like Megalosaurus, dinosaurs were still new during the 1800s. Because the Bible doesn't say or list any of these creatures. So a lot of people were mad that these used to be animals. Some people thought it was God testing their faith. But Iguanodon is mostly respected in the paleontology, um, I guess you could say Lee, is because it was one of the most newest dinosaurs at the time. First was Megalosaurus, as documented. This was the second one that I can think of. But anyway, I'm getting on topic. This is not... Megalosaur, this is Iguanodon. Anyway, Megalodon discovered in the 1920s. And they named it Iguana Tooth because its teeth were like an iguana. So, they always thought back then that dinosaurs were lizards, but they're actually more bird. We'll make a separate video on that. But anyway, Iguanodons, they can reach up to 33 to 41 feet long, and they can reach to 9 to 10 feet tall from foot to back. And they weigh three to four tons. Now, one ton equals 2,000 pounds. So it could weigh up to 8,000 to 6,000 pounds. That's heavier than an elephant. No. 
A Gorgon was thought to have no natural predators because of this big claw. It would make it look intimidating, correct? Some fossils show that its bones are being ripped away, and there are dent, dent marks in the bones of dinosaurs like Neovenator and Baryonyx. Now, Iguanodons, they weren't normally hunted as adults. They were more targeted when they were babies. Now, dinosaurs like Neovenator and Baryonyx, they also lived with the Iguanodon. Baryonyx was its most frequent enemy. When Iguanodons are babies, they're easily pickable. But Neovenator rather got other small ornithesians. Iguanodon wasn't on their main course, but it was the main appetite for Baryonyx when it was dry season. As you, Baryonyx at the time lived in Europe, and at the time it was most like it was kind of like a swampish, marshy place with some forests with green. And Baryonyx is a ciscobore, which I explained yesterday in the Spinosaurus video that they are adapted to eating fish. Now, when dry season comes, there's not enough fish for the baryonyx to have. So they result to carniv carnivorism, where they just eat any type of meat they can get their mouth on. So baryonyx would hunt iguanodon babies, because they were the easiest to get. And iguanodons, some scientists think that they're not good parents. People think that all dinosaurs are not good parents. And that can be debatable, but that's in a different video. Guanodon is also a special because it was a duck-billed dinosaur. And we call it that because it had a beak like this. Or some dinosaurs like Parasaurolophus had a bill. And Guanodon is related to some of these hadrosaurs because of the duck-billed face, like Edmontosaurus. That's another one of its closest relatives, the Edmontosaurus. So, the Iguanodon, given the thought that it used its claw for cutting vegetation down, it would make sense. Because stuff like fern trees, for example, their leaves are pretty tough to cut. So it makes sense that they would use that as like a knife to like cut the pieces off. And Iguanodon... They would also eat grass, because at the time, during the Cretaceous, there was grass. But during the Archaean, to the Permian, to the Triassic, to the Jurassic, there was no grass or flowers. But in the Cretaceous period, there were. So, maybe it munched on some grass. We can't really know for sure. And, as you can see, the head is meant to be a low browser, as you can see is bent down as a hunchback, but it was able to stand on its hind legs, and its tail was used to balance. So that gave the thought that it ate from trees, like fern trees, but it could also eat cycads, low-browsing animals like Stegosaurus. Now, could Iguanodon take down a large predator? Probably. These things could do some lethal damage if you're not careful. And Iguanodon is one of the most common found in Europe. I mean, there are some in North America, so they probably migrated. It would make sense because they ex went extinct 122 million years ago. And there are many theories. Number one, they were hunted to extinction because there were no children to reach adulthood. Therefore, no adults, no adults, no children. Maybe they were killed off by the Baryonyx. Well, maybe that's why there's less fossils in North America than there is in Europe. Maybe they migrated because climate change or the baryonyx had to chase them out of there. <clears throat> out of Europe, excuse me. It would make sense because North America doesn't have that many iguanodon fossils, but Europe does. It would make sense. So, it was probably hunted to extinction. It would make sense because the baryonyx and other carnivores like Neovenator or Megalosaur. Actually, no, Megalosaur is on the Triassic. But you get my point. They were either hunted to extinction, climate change, because that did happen. That's, a, that's the two points that I can think of that are pretty plausible. Now, I hope you enjoyed this video more than I did. I don't know what dinosaur I'll do next in the next video.
Who knows? I'll figure out by then, and you'll see it later. 